Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. It's gonna, today is Friday. Hey, all week I've been talking to you about the things Jesus said will happen to those who believe in him. And remember, I showed you that he says, they shall cast out devils. And that's what we've been dwelling on all week. I've been explaining different aspects and why it's important to your conscious about casting out devils. Now today, before we go into today's broadcast, I want us to call for that daily bread. Are you ready? Are you ready? Praise God. No devil will stop you. Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand now my daily bread. It's coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I said I'm sharing these things with you. One, that you will know the boldness that you carry. And two, you will know that the world we're operating is, <laughs> this is the warfare that we are involved with. Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Brothers and sisters, we do not wrestle against human beings. You see, human beings are normal. Even though there are some, like, like I showed you, like uh, the man called Bad Jesus, there are some who have willingly given themselves over to demonic activities because they, they enjoy the power they get from from the from the activities of demons in them you see the same way we enjoy the holy spirit because you see anyone who functions by the holy spirit there's an unusual boldness that you have towards life it's the same way those who possess demons willingly. Now, there are those who are possessed. They don't even know that they are possessed. See, they think they, they, something is just, they just think they're reason life in a different way. But they don't realize that they are actually responding to a voice. So you meet all kinds of people. But understand something, that this is a serious warfare and you can never escape it. Sometimes you, at your workplace, there are people who, are, who, who carry demons in them and they seek to trouble you. They will fight your promotion. Now you think they are envious. No, it's not them. There is a spirit that have located you. Now let me tell you this truth. Every child of God is a potential threat to the devil. Now, when I say to the devil, maybe I say to devils, because demons, evil spirits. It's not just Lucifer. You know, people think, oh, Lucifer is their king. No, 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 no. Lucifer does not control every devil. He doesn't control every demon. Lucifer is not in charge of every evil spirit. No. No. <laughs> no. No. You see, so Lucifer... He's done his own. There are evil spirits who are just doing their own thing. All kinds of wicked spirits in this world. They all oppose one thing. The children of God. So the moment as a child of God, you step into a place. And you suddenly begin to rise or your lights begin to shine, immediately they begin to form an enclosement around you to trap your lights. See, we live in a modern world, so they don't do it locally like they used to do in your village then. Now they do it modern, in, in a modern way. They, they are so sophisticated right now that they trap you with their sophistication. So you, you don't know that these are demon spirits at work. You think, ah, oh, this man has just been difficult. Oh, this man is just, I don't know what I did to my boss. I don't know what I did to this man. I don't know what I did to that lady that walks in. I, I don't just know. Anytime that lady sees me, she's just furious. You think it's normal? You've searched your heart. You didn't do anything to this person. 
It's not normal. You see, because they know that if you rise, you become, the higher you go, the more you do damage to their kingdom. Now, when I say to their kingdom, actually to their agenda, what's the agenda of every demon? Delay their judgment. They know their judgment is coming. They know. They know all, they all belong to the lake of fire. They know. They know. And there's nothing they can do about it. So all they can do now is to push that day forward. How will they push it forward? Get this, this, disable you. So that you won't function the way you're supposed to function. That closes the gap and brings the kingdom of God down. That's why Jesus said, if we begin to cast out demons by the spirit of God, it means that the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God has come to you. Because he's given us the authority to cast out devils. There's a reason he gave us the authority to cast out devils. And it's not for sure. It's for you to make advancements. And you see this life, there is no way you will make an inch of an advancement that you will not have to cast out devils. So you, you go to work and then suddenly, every time you do a proposal, beautiful thing, you research properly, did everything, and, and suddenly somebody picks it up and says, this is trash. It's not that person. <laughs> Is not that person. And you must know how to love human beings but deal with the spirits. See, a lot of believers have made this mistake of letting the attitude of men get them into bitterness, hurt, anger. And the moment you get into that realm, they have won you over. You see that now? Because see, when you get angry, when you get bitter, you scot yourself from God. Oh, you don't, you don't realize this. Someone is doing something to offend you, doing something to offend you, doing something to offend you, and you're looking at the person and keeping quiet. What they are trying to do to you, not the person, this is these things, these things are arranged by demon spirits. How many wives have lost their marriages because of this? They've lost their families because of this. I can't take it again. And then look at you. You're filled with so much hate, anger, bitterness. And in that state, now you, you didn't do wrong. They did you wrong. But you are the one carrying the anger, bitterness and all. Why? You get to that point where you're even angry with God because he didn't come true when you wanted him to come true. But how will he come true when there's bitterness and anger in your heart? Those things in themselves repels God from you. God can never, no matter how much he loves you, he can never dwell in an environment like that. He will shift away from you. Oh, you don't realize this. He will shift away from you. God will never stay with a bitter person. God will never stay with an angry person. He loves you. But the moment you start functioning in anger, the moment you are dwelling in bitterness, envy, contention, He separates from you. If you hear any voice, you can write this down. I said it. If you hear any voice at that time, trust me, it's not the Lord that spoke. A demon spirit spoke to you, no matter how accurate it sounds. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Jump down from this mountain, for it is written. He quoted the scriptures. I shall give my angels, he shall give his angels charge over you and they will keep you in all your ways. So even if you jump, angels will catch you. Wasn't that accurate? You see, but that's how Jesus would have jumped to his death. Because there is another word that was written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord 
your God. Now, this is the same thing you see preachers do. Preachers who are ignorant of these things. You take one side of scripture to justify what you want to do. And you, 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 now your heart is consumed with what you want to do already. Then you start looking for how to go about it. Then suddenly a scripture comes to you like, yes, yes. Then you see, the truth will come also. But what will you do? You ignore it. No, 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 no. This is the one I choose. You don't realize that you have been trapped. <laughs> you have been trapped. By the time you realize it, by the time you realize it, you've gone far. And even then, when you go back to the Lord and the Lord tells you the way of repentance, you will look at the journey and you say, no, Lord, let's just take this one that we have. There are many people in that book. You've gone far from the Lord. But in that, that, that distance you've gone, you've seen some measure of success. But you know in your heart that this measure of success I'm enjoying, this is not what God wants from me. You know it. But every time you think of repenting, because the Lord have impressed it in your look, you, you've got to turn back to me. But every time you think of repenting, you look at the journey and you say, Kai. Mm -mm. So what have you been doing? Procrastinating. Ah. Next month. Okay, let this year end. After this year, I'm going to turn away. But it's so difficult for you. My prayer for you is that the spirit of death doesn't catch you. Now that you still have breath in you, you have a chance. You have an opportunity the Lord is giving to you. You can turn around. You can repent. That shame you're afraid of because you're, you're scared. I'm speaking to someone. You are scared of the shame. And people realize that, ah, you've been doing the wrong thing. You're scared of that shame. And that's what's propelling you to continue. But you see, the road you're on, death is waiting for you. And he's the last person that is trying to trap you because once he traps you, that light has been put off. But as long as you are alive, your light can still come on if you repent. Why don't you turn to the Lord now while you still have today? Turn to him in true repentance. He will accept you. He will bring, he will give you that your calling that you had with him before. He will give it to you. This extra thing you've gone to add, you know he didn't give it to you. You know it. I pray the Lord helps you. But I warn you also, death is nearby. Except you repent. Praise God. I said I was going to show you a scripture today. Yes, Acts, Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Now, from verse 9. Acts chapter 8 from verse 9. I'm going to read it and skip some verses. Mm. But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery. See that now? In the city and astonished the people of Samaria. He astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. That's, a, that's um, Simon, okay? All right. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. Mm. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Now, here is a fault. Now, now, say, but he believed God. 
They said he believed because he began to follow Philip. But truly, he did not believe. You see, I'll tell you something that will shock you today. Watch. I'll read this again, verse 13. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued. Watch this. He continued with Philip and was amazed. Seeing the miracles and signs which were done. See that statement. And was amazed. Now, the Bible says he was baptized. Now, that was water baptism that was referred to. He was baptized. And he was amazed. So he followed Philip because of the miracles. Not because of the spirit of God in him. But because of the miracles. Now, watch this now. Now, when the apostles who were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Now, you see, previously they had not received the Holy Spirit. Now, that's the truth is they have not been born again. They were just um, acting like the days of John the Baptist. How many of you have believed? I believe, come and be baptized. So they take them to the water and they baptize them. But then when the disciples heard it, they said, ah, no, 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 no. Um, Peter and John, we need to go straighten things out. So they sent them and they got there. And guess what? It says, verse 15, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he had fallen upon none. See, so nobody was born again. Even though the whole city turned to Philip by the words that he spoke. They got baptized in water, but they were not born again. So water baptism doesn't get you saved. We'll talk about that another day. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say, For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw, now watch, now when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money saying, give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Ghost. Now, this is to also tell you that Simon himself did not receive the Holy Ghost. He did not. Because if he had received the Holy Ghost, he would have known that it came freely. He wouldn't have taken the step he took. Remember I told you about fruits. But Simon was looking. And he saw this, Simon's case was exactly like this. that other lady we read about um, yesterday. That Paul cast out that devil from. Same case with Simon. Let me follow this guy. Man, this guy does so many wonders. Let me follow him. Look at what Peter said. He says, now he offered them money. Like today they'll call it seed. Ah, this brother brought heavy seed. He wants to tap into the anointing. Ah, brother, you want to tap into the anointing? Kneel down here. Be careful. Be careful. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither. Now watch these words. This is someone who the Bible claims believed. Peter says, you have neither part nor portion in this matter for your heart is not right in the sight of God. He said it. Now Peter was speaking by the spirit. So he saw his heart by the spirit of God. He says, repent therefore of this your wickedness and pray if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned with by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Uh -huh. This was Philip's minister. More like Philip's assistant. Peter said, nah, your heart is bound with bitterness and iniquity. How many people in church are bound by bitterness and iniquity? I was telling you about that earlier. When we're looking words, we know we have a lot of work to do. But I pray, I pray that your spirit will not be deceived. 
because the spirit of deception is a lot these days. But I pray that the spirit of truth will guide you, like Jesus said, into all truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My time is up. Listen to me. You're going to have a great weekend. And we're going to continue next week. See you on Monday. Bye.